It is happening again, you guys. A graphics card launch from AMD's Radeon Technologies Group that is causing a reshuffle in the $300 range of GPUs for playing the PC video games. This is the Radeon RX 5600 XT. Its suggested retail price is $280. And to give you a quick assessment of it right up front, uh, it's actually quite good. Excellent! So at the $280 price point, the RX 5600 XT should be competing with NVIDIA's GTX 1660 Ti, which has been selling for about that much, depending on the model that you choose. As is often the case with a launch like this though, NVIDIA apparently caught wind of the 5600 XT's performance and decided a better competitor would be the RTX 2060, which has been going for about $350 for the non-super version with six gigs of VRAM. To that end, we have the just launched EVGA RTX 2060 KO, or Knockout Edition here, uh, which is $300 MSRP for the standard non-overclocked version, and there's an ultra version that's OC'd for 20 bucks more. I am okay with resetting the base price of the RTX 2060 to 300 bucks. That is the benefit of the introduction of some competition in this range, but I have to admit, I'm still a little bit wary about the availability of these cards. I have been watching stock levels on Newegg for the past week plus since it launched, and it seemed to be pretty readily available up until this morning when the $300 version went out of stock. I also saw some other models available. There was like a $320 Zotac RTX 2060 with a $20 instant rebate, but that has now disappeared as well. Amazon actually does have the EVGA 2060 KO listed, but with an estimated ship out time of one to two months. So, because as of today, my fears do seem to be at least somewhat warranted for that you can't necessarily buy an RTX 2060 for $300, I'm gonna be listing that card at $320 in the benchmark charts, which is the price of the actually currently available RTX 2060 KO Ultra, which ships, again, with that modest factory overclock. That means it's a $40 premium over the Radeon RX 5600 XT if you go with an RTX 2060, but if you're watching this video in the future, I would highly encourage you to check the video's description for links so you can verify what the real prices are for these GPUs for you right now. Okay, enough with the pricing and positioning and AMD versus Nvidia drama. Let's go over some of the vital stats for the 5600 XT and then we can look at some benchmarks. This is a Navi based GPU, just like the 5700 and 5500 series. The GPU is built on seven nanometer lithography with 36 compute units, 2,304 stream processors and game and boost clocks of 1375 and 1560 megahertz respectively. I was sent this Sapphire Pulse OC model, which bumps those clock speeds up to 1615 and 1750 megahertz respectively. Although under sustained load, it was running just below that at maybe 1732 megahertz. Just remember, instead of base and boost, AMD is now listing a game clock and a max boost clock and the cards usually level out at a tick or two under that listed max boost speed. Now you'll probably note that those specs, at least the uh, stream processors and everything, are really close, pretty much identical to the RX 5700, which is a very good card, which sells for usually starting at $350, with the main difference between the 5700 and the 5600 XT being the memory layout. Six gigs of GDDR6 on the 5600 XT versus eight gigs on the 5700 and 5700 XT. It's also a 192-bit interface with the 5600 XT for the memory, so the memory bandwidth is reduced to 288 gigabytes per second. It's also running slightly slower versus 448 gigabytes per second on the 5700. Total board power is 150 watts for the 5600 XT and supplemental power is provided by an eight pin PCI Express graphics connector. Note here again that Sapphire is pretty much using the same PCB layout from their 5700 line for this card because there's another open blank spot for a second PCIe power connector, which not, isn't necessary for this card, but is for the 5700. Display outs on this Sapphire Pulse OC model include three DisplayPort 1.4s and one HDMI 2.0B, uh, which should, should be noted as another bit of a benefit versus the EVGA RTX 2060 KO, which uses the default GTX 1600 series outputs of a single DisplayPort, single HDMI, and one dual link DVI. It's also worth mentioning that the 5600 XT has support for some cool Radeon software features such as Radeon image sharpening, anti-lag, integer scaling, and boost. And if you wanna know what those are and what they do, I will put some links in the description to AMD's info pages for Radeon Software Adrenaline 2020 edition uh, down in the description. 
Let's move on to benchmarks. All of my tests are run on this test system right here. It has an Intel Core i9-9900K running at 4.8 gigahertz across all cores, an ASRock Z390 Tai Chi Ultimate Motherboard, an NZXT Kraken X62 280mm all-in-one liquid CPU cooler, 16 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z Royal RGB DDR4 memory running at 3600 cast latency 16, a Samsung 960 Pro 512 gig NVMe SSD, an EVGA Supernova 750 watt 80 plus gold rated power supply, and Windows 10 64 bit. For comparison graphics cards on the AMD side, we have the Radeon RX 598 gig represented by XFX's Fatboy card and the Radeon RX 5700 reference card at default speeds. For NVIDIA GPUs, I included the GTX 1660 Ti, the stock GeForce RTX 2060 Founders Edition, and of course the new EVGA RTX 2060 KO, which does run a bit faster out of the box than the stock Founders Edition card, which is good. And again, just to reiterate, I, I think the 2060 KO is a good option to have at that $300 price, and it's not a bad performing card for an RTX 2060 by any stretch. I am purely maintaining skepticism because I don't know if they will continue to be available in the future at that $300 price. That said, here are the benchmarks. So let's get started with 3 d Mark Firestrike Ultra. This is uh, running at 4K. It's a DirectX 11 synthetic test. And for some reason in this test, at least the Radeon seemed to do better, whereas with the DirectX 12 Time Spy that we're gonna move on to in a second, the NVIDIA card seemed to do better. So this is a good first look for the 5600 XT. The uh, 2060 KO is actually 21% slower in this particular test. And the GTX 1660 Ti is 42% slower. Next up is the aforementioned 3 d Mark Time Spy Extreme. So we're moving over to DirectX 12 now. Here the 5600 XT does not fare quite as well. 5700 manages to stay on top, but the 2060 KO beats the 5600 XT by about 6%. The 5600 XT does manage to stay on top of the 1660 Ti still though by about 13%. Next we have 3 Mark VR Mark Blue Room. This is a virtual reality test. I like to throw one of these in just to show what the performance might be like. And here, if VR is actually gonna be a concern of yours, you might consider leaning towards the RTX cards because the 2060 KO comes out on top. The 5600 XT is 14% slower than the 2060 KO here, although it does remain 5% faster than the 1660 Ti. Let's move into some actual game tests starting here with Ashes of the Singularity Escalation running at 2560 by 1440. This is in DirectX 12 mode. And here the 5600 XT is on top again, edging out the 2060 KO by about 1.4%. Meanwhile, at 1920 by 1080, it beats the 2060 KO by a slightly wider margin. The 5600 XT has a 3.6% lead here. Of course, the RX 5700 has the outright lead here with an average frame rate of 58.2. That is 4.3% faster than the 5600 XT. Moving over to Grand Theft Auto 5, running at 2560 by 1440. This is a DirectX 11 test. And here the NVIDIA cards did really well. The 2060 KO is 13.5% faster than the 5600 XT. And the RTX 2060 and RX 5700, with the average frame rate of 105, are 9.3% faster. GTA 5 at 1920 by 1080 shows pretty much the same story, but it is a little bit closer race. The 2060 KO is 10.9% faster than the 5600 XT here, while the 2060 standard and 5700 are five and six percent faster respectively. Next up we have Battlefield 5 at 2560 by 1440 and the Radeons are on top once again. The 5600 XT here is 10 percent faster than the RTX 2060 KO and 23 percent faster than the 1660 Ti with an average frame rate of 88. Over at the 1920 by 1080 resolution, the Radeons are on top once again, but do note the 1% lows here for the 5600 XT. They could be a little bit better. That's perhaps something that could be ironed out by future driver updates. It does beat the 2060 KO by 12.5% here, at least when it comes to the average frame rate. Next up, we have Overwatch at 2560 by 1440. We're using Epic settings, which are really only useful for benchmarking. Here, the 5600 XT has an average frame rate of 141. That's 5.7% faster than the 2060 KO and about 20% faster than the 1660 Ti. Next, we have Overwatch at 1920 by 1080. Here, the 5600 XT has 208 average frames per second. That's 3.4% faster than the 2060 KO and 17.8% faster than the 1660 Ti. And our final test here is Metro Exit. This is also DirectX 12. At 2560 by 1440, the Radeons take the crown one last time. With an average frame rate of 48.9, the 5600 XT is 6.8% faster than the 2060 KO here, and it absolutely crushes the 1660 Ti. It is almost 30% faster than its frame rate of 34.7, down there by the RX 590. Did, did I mention the RX 590 has been involved in these benchmarks too? It's 
it's it's been down at the bottom. And here's Metro Exodus at 1920 by 1080. Pretty much the same story as 1440. The 5600 XT and 5700 win, and the 1660 Ti is still struggling. So to give a bit of summation for all of these tests, here's a performance comparison at both 2560 by 1440 and 1920 by 1080. This is an average of all of the game tests, and we can see that the 5700 is still a faster car than the 5600 XT, as it should be by about 8.3% at 2560 by 1440 and 6.6% .6 at 1920 by 1080. Meanwhile, the 2060 KO, although it did take a few wins, overall was slower by about 2.1% at 1460 and by about 2.9% at 1080. The RTX 2060 is about 6 to 7% slower. Bear in mind that is the bone stock default specs for that. So that is very overclockable like the KO. There are 2060s that are faster than both of these cards on the market, but they are also more expensive. And of course we can see why Nvidia wanted a different competitor than the 1660 Ti for the 5600 XT because it's about 19% slower at 1440 and about 17% slower at 1080. Here's my final chart that involves prices as well. We can see all the average performance comparisons versus the 5600 XT, 1080p in orange, 1440p in blue. And I think this does a good job of showing how the nice price drop off from 350 bucks down to 280 bucks seems to make reasonable sense for the 5600 XT and also makes it a pretty compelling value when you compare it to the 2060, whether you're talking about a 2060 KO at 320 bucks or even if you were considering it at 300 bucks if it does come back into stock or even more so with all the other RTX 2060s that are currently selling for $350 and up. So there it is you guys, AMD has launched another mid-range GPU and this one at a very competitive price point where a lot of people tend to buy graphics cards right around 300 bucks. Nvidia has answered in their own way, but even with the price drop on the RTX 2060 KO, it still seems like it's maybe just a little bit overpriced. The 5600 XT won in most of the tests except for Time Spy, VRMark, and GTA 5, and if AMD is to be believed, there will be quite a few models available at around $280 to $300, whereas with the RTX 2060, most of the better built, higher end cards are still listed for $350 or more. AMD does deserve some criticism for their driver issues recently, and although I didn't experience any instability while testing personally, it is something to bear in mind as simply being unable to use your card would probably make many of you jump off the Radeon train pretty quickly, so we're going to be keeping an eye on that. All that said, I will post links to these video cards in the description so you guys can check them out yourself. Let me know in the comments section if you're impressed with the 5600 XT's performance or price or combination of both, or if you'd still prefer Team Green this time around. And of course, like and subscribe this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.